Hello, my name's Adam Murphy, and we now have a quick look at curves, their types, and manipulation in Blender. Now, what are curves? Curves are maths. As described by the Blender Online Manual, curves are expressed by mathematical functions rather than a series of points. This means you get much more organic or smooth results between the points without having to alter each individual polygon. So let's talk about some curves, and we'll talk about the Bezier curve first. A Bezier curve is described as having control points, handles, and a segment which joins the control points together. By rotating, scaling, and altering the transformations of the control points and handles, we can move and change the function of this segment so we can get a much more smoother and organic edge than we would if we use polygons. Let's have a look at some handle types. So after adding a curve in Blender, we can push tab to enter edit mode and we can access the handles. And once in edit mode, we've got the option to press V and by pressing V, we can change the handle types. And right in front of us, we've got an example of all the different handle types for Bezier curves. So by default, we get the aligned handle type and if we push V, we've got the option to, if we selected them all, change it to automatic. And if we change it to automatic, what it does is it seems to smooth off all the handles to give you the smoothest possible puff as Blender calculates it. If we change them all to vector, what it does is straightens every handle and makes them as straight as possible. But it also gives you the option to manipulate every handle individually, as I have done with the bottom one so we can still access the function of the curve. By being aligned, we simply get to change every default control point and handle. And if we make it free, it allows you to move every individual handle free from the control points or the handle of the other position. By default, in aligned, it keeps it at 180 degrees through the handles to the control point, or it's a straight line. If we choose toggle and free, it simply toggles it between free and aligned mode. Now we have a quick look at the other curve types, the Z being the most common, we also get the option of a circle, which is just a default circle, so we get the option to change the resolution as we see fit. But if we add a nerves curve, it's quite different. It seems to ignore the first and last polygon, though it does use it for calculating the curve. The difference between a path and a nerves curve is that a path has knots on the end, as they say it in Blender. A nerves curve kind of only uses the first and last polygon for calculating the function. In a path, it knots it all the way to the end. Another option is we can draw our own curve freehand simply using a mouse. This is very useful and very fun. The last one we can see here is the poly. This is what you encounter when you change a mesh to a curve. It changes it straight to the poly form. So at the top here, we push Alt-C to change a mesh to a curve. At first, it changes it to its polygon form, which is a very straight and rigid form, simply with a path. And then if we wanted to, we can set the spline type if we push T in a 3D window, and then we can change the spline type to Bezier or Nerves if we'd like, and then we can get a much higher resolution curve. Alternatively, we can turn a curve into a mesh. So if we've created the curve, and we increase the resolution to what we desire, we can push Alt-C to turn it into the mesh, and then it'll instantly turn it into the mesh polygon form. One thing to note about all paths is they all have a direction. Paths are simply default nerves curves with a knot on the end. So if you push Shift-A and add a path, you're simply getting default nerves curve with a knot on the end. So it takes the trajectory all the way to the very end. All curves can be a path, so though you can add a path, all curves, including Bezier curves, can be a path. Although you can just change the path animation frames and the length down the bottom right here, can be quite complex and is located inside the data blocks prevalently in the outliner, and it's something we'll cover in the future. And to change the scale of these arrows inside the path, all we have to do is push Alt-S and that will scale the arrows for us, so they're not too large or too small. It does not change the actual function of the path itself. Now to get a quick default animation for a path, we can quickly parent default object to the path and select follow path. 
and that way the object we select to follow the path will simply follow the path for us. We have a quick look at 2D and 3D curves. Curves as you enter them are all 3D by default. If you want to make a surface, I suggest you change it to 2D, which can be found inside the curve options between 2D and 3D. We can choose the fill mode, and I like to set both just for safety. And just like here, I've got one curve cutting out another. If they're both inside the same object, and they're on the same plane exactly, being 2D, they can be used to cut really nice organic shapes out of each other. So if I added a simple Bezier curve, went to top view using 7, then moved it across, so it's now exactly at the center origin of the grid, now I can easily add a UV sphere, I'm going to scale it down by 0.05, exit edit mode, parent it to the path, making it follow path, and simply animate it, and it'll follow the path over exactly 100 frames, the length of the animation, as described inside the curve being 100 frames. Subscribe and thank you for watching.